combining multiple three-phase loads to a common feeder. In this presentation, we're going to look at the calculations required in order to accomplish this. And we're going to be dealing with balanced loads. We're not going to be looking at unbalanced loads. We're going to look at multiple balanced loads that are all connected to the same three-phase bus. Now, in order to accomplish this, what we're going to use is power triangles. Power triangles are our friend. They're the easiest item to utilize in order to calculate all of the different values. Now, often a method that I will use is to first, for each individual load, sketch a power triangle. In order to work out the totals for the circuit, I am then going to add the horizontal components of each of the power triangles and add all of the reactive components, of course, keeping in mind that inductive and capacitive loading, the VARs will cancel each other out. After I've added the totals, I will then calculate the total VA for the circuit by using Pythagoras. Now, most questions will give us a voltage of the source and a current for the load. If I use the voltage line value and current line value times root three, I automatically get the S. That would be the VA of that individual load. Now, again, most of the questions will have the power factor of the load because we're dealing with things like motors or heaters, and they're gonna give us that information. The S multiplied by the power factor will then render my power, the total power for that particular load. Personally, I choose to then use Pythagoras in order to work out the Q value on the vertical side. Now, this is by no means the process you must take. Instead, it is one of many that you could use. I have found this one to be very straightforward and a process that works for most questions. Now, after I've calculated the horizontal and vertical component of each load, we then move on to the total. And from here, I can then calculate the VA total for the entire system. And if I wanted to, I could also work out the total line current, because remember, S total is equal to, well, E line times I line times root three. So let's take a look at our first example. The first example has a 208 volt three phase source. It has a motor, a heater, and motor two. Motor one is 208 volts, three phase, 15 amps. That would be the line value and a power factor of 0.75, whereas the heater, is operating at a power factor of one, which we really don't even need to be told, and is 20 kilowatts worth of power, 208 volt, three phase, of course. And motor two, again, 208 volt, three phase, two amps, that would be the line value, power factor 0 0.3. So first step for this, I'm gonna sketch a power triangle for each one, and I'm then gonna start adding well, calculating all of the different sides of those power triangles, and then we'll work out the total. So in order to do that, I'm gonna make my first power triangle right here and label it M1 motor one, 208 volt, 15 amp, 0.75 power factor means that if I use E line, I line root three, I get the total VA. They've told me it's 0.75 and therefore I should be able to take my VA and multiply it by 0.75 to get my power. And finally, I can use Pythagoras to get my VAR value 3574.4, although I caution, this is not the only way to accomplish this question. It's one of many. And depending on where your inclination lies, perhaps you prefer to use more of the three phase calculations. You are certainly able to do that. So next one is my heater. And the heater is, well, it's, total power, isn't it? There is no VARs in the heater. And because of that, there is no vertical component to that triangle. Now, Dave, why didn't you just draw a straight line horizontal? Well, I'm a creature of habit and I prefer to put the vertical in there and just label it zero because I don't know, it makes me feel good to do so. The next item is my motor two, 208 volt, two amp, 0.3 of a power factor, meaning I multiply the two values, root three to get my VA, and then use my power factor to get my watts and Pythagoras to get my VARs. Once I do all of that, what we need to do is add all the verticals and add all the components. Since we have all 
uh, inductive loads, that means the VARs will all add together. And this then means that the total should be about 24,000 watts, 4261 VARs. And by using Pythagoras with these two values, I come out with 24,640. So the last step then would be for us to work out the total current, the line current. That's what we wanted to know. So let's go back to our question and let's calculate the total line current. So here was our question. And the total line current we know is going to be calculated by using this equation. The total line current is going to be determined by the total S that we have of the circuit, E line times root three. So we go through the whole process and we end up with a current value, line value of 68.39 amps. Let's look at another example. The second example, we're doing I line and we also wanna know what is the total VA. It's a 600 volt three phase system with three separate motors. They're of course all rated 600 volt, eight amp, six amp, 12 amp, and the power factor of 0 0.6, 0 0.4 and 0 0.75. Well, the same as what we've done in the previous example, I am first going to be looking at uh, developing a power triangle for each one of those individual motors. So here is our first power triangle, motor one. We have a 8313 VA. I calculated that first. I then used the power factor to get my watts and I used Pythagoras to get my VARs. The second motor, same thing. I calculated the VA first, used the power factor to get the watts and then calculated with Pythagoras my VARs. And finally, the last one, Guess what, it's a pattern. We're doing the same thing every single time. Once we've got all of the vertical components calculated and all the horizontal, we add them in a large total circuit power triangle. In doing this, we get a total VA that is 26,615.65. And we found that by the total watts being 16,835.52, and the total VARs being 20,614.52 VARs. The power factor for this total circuit will then be 0.63. And of course, that would be lagging. All right, well, let's go back to the question because the question wanted to know, what is the total VA? We've already calculated that. And what is the total line current? So here we have all of the calculated values. I line and we take our S total divided by E line times root three, and we end up with a line current of 25.61 amps. Let's look at a third example. The third example is a 480 volt three phase system, two motors, and the two motors are 10 horsepower and seven and a half horsepower. And well, we have some additional information in there, some percent efficiencies and a power factor. Now keep in mind, percent efficiency and power factor are two very different distinct items. They are not the same thing. So how are we gonna deal with this? Well, let's expand on that first and then we'll solve the actual question. When we're working with percent efficiency, what we need to understand is that the motor itself is really divided up. The motor has an output power, which would be at the shaft of the motor. It has an input, input power, which would be the total watts that we need in order to drive the thing. And then we have losses in the middle, which is represented by the percent efficiency. A way you can think about it is that the watts of electrical input which would be the volts times the FLA, the full load amps of the motor, equals the total amount of VA that is required in order to drive the motor. The power factor applied would then give us the total watts. If we then subtract the amount of percent efficiency watts from this total input, we're left with what the mechanical output watts is. And of course, it's always less than the input. So watts output in North America is given as horsepower. Input power for a motor is given as watts and that's because it's electrical. We can convert horsepower to watts. 
watts is equal to horsepower times 746. What this means is that we're going to take our 10 horsepower, multiply it by 746, which gives us 7460 watts of what though? Watts output. That is the output power. We use our percent efficiency formula. Power input is equal to power out divided by the percent efficiency. It's got to get larger. 7460 divided by 0 0.85 equals 8776.47. So notice what I've done here. I have now used what I knew about power and the output power of the motor and the percent efficiency to work out the total watts input power of the motor. We then use the power factor that was given to us in the question. And to get this VA value, what did we do? Well, we need to take the watts and divide it by the power factor and we get the total VA. How do they get the VARs? Well, I just chose to use Pythagoras. So once we have all of that, now we can move on to the next motor. So to review, with a question like this, I need to look at the output power, calculate the amount of watts it represents, increase it by using the percent efficiency in order to get the power input. The power input is then used to calculate the total amount of uh, power that would be used to drive the motor and the power input is placed on the power triangle. All right, well, second motor, let's take a look at what numbers we are gonna get for this one. The second motor is gonna use exactly the same process. And we can see here it's seven and a half horsepower and 68% efficient with a power factor of 0 0.7. Well, the process that I would go through is exactly the same as the previous example. Horsepower times 746 gives me 5595 watts. That would be the power output. That would be the shaft of the motor. Power input is P output divided by percent efficiency. So 5595 watts divided by 0.68 gives me 8227.94 watts, which is the power input, which is what I'm gonna use in my power triangle for this motor. There it is up here on the horizontal. There's the power factor given in the question, 8227.94 divided by 0.7 will give me my total VA. And I use Pythagoras to get my VAR value. Finally, the last step would then be for us to take these two power triangles and add the vertical and the horizontal components together. Well, I've taken my two watt values. Those are both input power values, and I've added them together to get just over 17,000 watts. And then the VARS values, I add those together and I get 12,644. By using the horizontal and the vertical with Pythagoras, I get the total VA and to calculate my power factor, I take the horizontal and divide it by the hypotenuse, which gives me 0 0.8. Finally, the total amount that we have for this particular circuit was the line current values, what was being asked for. So let's go back to the original question, 40 volt three phase system, I line and total line current equaling 25.48 because we took the total S and we divided it by the voltage, which was the line value times root three to get just over 25 amps.